Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ali Usman. I am a technologist, strategist, and an architect. In today's video, I would like to go over a question that I am being asked mostly about my career and how I became an EJ. And I would like to answer this question with some additional information so that this video may be useful to others who are looking to make a switch to an EJ. There is a clear path for someone completing their education and starting off with an intern or a junior position in EA. But for those who have limited understanding of the role itself, it becomes a little unclear. And this video is to help them out. As someone uh, who has been in that uh, situation myself, I will also share with you my journey and how I became an EA. Just a little spoiler, uh, I have since moved on from that role and now in my current role, I have an oversight of EA program uh, than doing hands-on EA myself. Let's get started with typical roles in IT you see today. And I would like to cover as many as I can just to show you guys that everyone has a place uh, in enterprise architecture. There are skills that you must have developed as part of your existing career path that you can definitely bring to EA. I've hired people from different backgrounds uh, for EA work. Uh, they may not know uh, frameworks or the terminologies when I hired them, but I knew for the fact that they would be great asset to the EA program because of all the knowledge and skills that they have acquired over time as part of their previous roles, and then they are bringing uh, those skills to the table for uh, for an enterprise architect's position. Um, so as you can see, uh, these roles are common in uh, all IT shops today. Starts with the uh, project manager, business analyst, goes down to uh, roles in uh, uh, database admin and uh, data analytics and architects. We have roles uh, for solution architects, um, network, and then the security folks. This diagram uh, shows the framework which I'll be using to help you guys understand how different roles come together with EA. On the left, you see an uh, on ramp uh, a column which indicates your prior skill set or your role. Your pathway in the middle shows how this role gets on track with enterprise architecture. And then after you go through the motions of uh, uh, the different seniority levels, um, what opportunities you may have in the future, uh, which would be covered under the off-ramp column. As I mentioned earlier, on the left you see the typical roles that I talked about in, my, uh, in one of my previous slides. Uh, in the center, you see big green box, which represents EA as a career, and then there are smaller boxes in the big green box, which represents the domains of or layers of EA. I also show the level of seniority so that uh, we can connect this with the off-ramp set of titles. Uh, under the off-ramp uh, column, we have managerial or senior level roles. If you are someone who has been working as a project manager, uh, business analyst, program analyst, or portfolio manager, I see you guys great fit to help to be an EA who can do really good business architecture or a business architect itself. There are some there are some skills that you have developed as part of your your previous roles that makes you invaluable for for an EA position. Your communication skills your organizational skills, your negotiation skills, problem solving, budget management, active listening, and policy knowledge makes you a great fit to be an EA who can do really well in the business domain. For those folks who are mostly focused on the data side of things, um, again, there are some skills that you guys develop as part of your career that makes you great for great fit for that uh, for, for that role. Uh, the critical thinking is an important part of it. Uh, your data-driven mindset, uh, the way you understand data and how you 
use that data to uh, to make it presentable in such a way that it can help with the decision making process makes you an invaluable asset being here. And for folks who have been um, software engineer developers or solution architect or all their life, they are a great fit to come and help with the application domain, um, the application architecture. They are not going to be the people creating the architecture for the applications, but they essentially are going to be the people interacting with the application or solution architects. But what them make great is their analytic skills, uh, their problem solving skills their willingness to learn and adapt quickly, uh, their time management, um, ability to work uh, independently. I mean, all that makes them great fit uh, for any year. For folks who have been DevOps, um, system, system admin, network admin, or uh, security engineer, they also bring great uh, set of skills with them. They're multitasking their operational mindset, uh, staying calm under pressure, their attention to detail, all these skills uh, make them great uh, to uh, be a great EA. So as we had talked about all these different roles, these different roles help you hone some cer certain skills that can come to EA to make an EA uh, an invaluable program. Um, you, as in, uh, you may not understand business architecture term terminologies as first, uh, if you have been network engineer all your life, but you would definitely appreciate how things come together to form an architecture of an organization and how security layer connects with the layers above to paint a picture that can be used to make informed decisions about the organization. As an EA who specializes in security, you are in a great position to help leadership understand how security is vital to fulfillment of uh, an organization's mission, for instance. Uh, but once you get on track with EA, opportunities are really endless because you are really close to uh, the strategic element of the organization uh, than the operation. It is easier to move up or change roles uh, to a managerial position and as you can see on the right uh, you do see some of those roles uh, because they contribute significantly to the organization's business and technology strategy as i had indicated earlier that uh, i will also share my journey so here it is i started my work as a software engineer um, and uh, spend most of my, of my career as uh, an, an application development world. Um, I moved through the ladder um, from starting from junior to senior, and that helped me land a job as an architect. Uh, and this job helped me uh, gain an entry to the EA world. And uh, the position that I uh, secured was a senior EA position. Uh, this position of mine was uh, kind of like a mix of multiple things. I was EA along with the DevOps architect, uh, part solution architect, and others. Um, but this position gave me a really great exposure to many aspects of being an architect. And it helped me uh, along with my other uh, prior experiences to secure uh, a position that I currently hold, which is a uh, CTO position. Uh, chief technology officer's position in uh, um, a mid to large uh, organization. Um, in my current role, I am uh, not a hands-on architect, but my role is to oversee uh, the EA program in its totality. So I am someone who is uh, actively involved uh, laying out the strategy uh, of the organization, um, and also trying to use EA as a tool for the management. And uh, this is where, this is what I currently do. And that's essentially it. Uh, this was the video for today. Please let me know um, if you have any questions uh, and comments, and uh, please let me know how you like today's video. Thank you very much.